Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. This isn't another video on the EMC generator series, um, but I feel it's somewhat related. Uh, this episode we're going to be covering the infinite geothermal generators. Uh, basically what it is, it's like almost like a power cell. It's like a block of geothermal generators that can be infinitely fed lava to create infinite power. Uh, around the 520 EU a tick mark, which is about as much as a high voltage solar panel, or about maybe even a little bit more than your average nuclear reactor. So this is big stuff. So let's get started then. So just quickly, we'll show you how to go about making a geothermal generator. So first off, you need to make yourself a generator, which is this recipe here. Then next off, you're going to need to make some empty cells. That's the recipe there. And last but not least, you make your geothermal generator, and that is the recipe there. So you're going to need a total of 30 generators. I know that sounds like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's actually quite cheap. Um, it comes out to be about 15 diamonds worth of EMC, so not too bad at all, really. Um, basically, what you want to get started with, what I've done here is I've, I've mapped out a 5x6 area of uh, redstone piping, which is just 30 blocks, basically. You can go 6x5 that way. Or you could go 6x5 long ways, however you want to do it. As long as it's 30 there, then you're golden. So all I'm going to do is, I'm going to pop... Oh, how if I put them in the right place? Pop them down on here. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll quickly nab the one we had prepared. I'm glad I did that now. Uh, okay, so... Bam, 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 bam. Things can be a little bit tricky to place on sometimes. Um, when it comes to the redstone piping, uh, they can be two blocks deeper. I've done them one block underneath just to save space, but uh, if you want to try and hide them, you don't need to have any piping on the side here. You only need to have them directly underneath. So if you wanted to hide them by uh, placing blocks here, for example, and, and hide it, then you know that that would be fine. You can do that no problem. I'm just going to quickly grab my pick, which appears to have disappeared. Okay, I'll have to. Clearly, someone has pinched my pick. Okay, now that we got rid of that, let's move on. So next, up, we want to connect all of these up with your cable of choice. I'm using glass fiber cable because it is the most efficient. But uh, you could use copper cable. Um, I believe that the geothermal generators are low, vi uh, low voltage. Uh, citation needed, but I'm pretty sure they are. But in all honesty, if you're building things on this scale, you want to be dealing with fiber optic cable, uh, fiberglass cable. Sorry, not fiber optic cable, um, because it is the most efficient way. And if you can afford to make this level of stuff, then you should be able to make fiberglass cable no problem. Um, it, lo it gives the least. EU lossage, lossage, loss, I guess you could say, um, when you're dealing with greater distances. So, like with all these pipes here, you're going to be losing like hardly any EU a tick. But if you were using copper cable, for example, you'd be losing a lot more in the process of things. So, next off, you want to take your macerator, which, if you don't know how to make a macerator, then you look up on my other videos uh, in the EMC generator series. I believe episode two is the macerator. And we're going to be making ourselves a blaze powder generator, which, again, is the second video of the, se of the series if you want to look up how to make it. So, we just want to place our macerator there. Okay, so that's placed now. So, then we want to go. Filter. It needs to. You need to make sure when placing the filter that it's facing towards the macerator, not on either direction or away from it. it has to be facing the side of the macerator, like I have done there. Then you want to place a energy condenser there. Then a second filter. Uh, again, facing towards. Oh, facing towards the chest, not left, right, above or down. Uh, then you want to have redstone tubing coming directly out of. You want to leave a gap there so it doesn't connect to the side of the filter because then things get complicated. And this needs to feed straight back round and in like that. Okay. Once you've done that, have a bit of cable come off like so and connect your chest like that. 
Okay, so it goes macerator, filter, chest, filter, tubing, back into the macerator with an extra bit coming off to go into a second chest. Okay. Okay, so once your setup looks something like what's in front of me here, that's when we're going to start uh, putting all the items we need into the various places. So, we'll start with the macerator because that's the simplest. So take six of your overclock upgrades. If you don't know how to make overclockers, then you can check out my second video uh, with the blaze rod video for EMC Generate series. And you want to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's a reason why you go six, and we'll cover that in a moment. Okay, so once that's done, you want to take blaze a blaze rod, just one, and pop it like that. Uh, once we get, well, we'll cover that in a second once the machine gets started. In this chest, you want to go blaze rod. And then in this filter here, you also want to go blaze rod. So it's going to go blaze rod, leave, blaze rod, blaze rod, and we'll fill that one in a minute. In the end one here, you want to take your lava cells. This is just an empty cell that you combine with a bucket of lava, okay? And pop it in to this chest here. Okay, so that's all set up. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is you're going to need to make a few of these lava cells as spares. Okay, so how you do this is you just chuck... Well, you don't even need to do that, but I've got these spares, so I've chucked them in there. And then just throw in some materials to make some spare... Oh, don't want to throw that in there. Some spare lava cells to get this process going. Okay, so right, we've done that. Oh dear. Okay, so... Fell off there, doesn't help. Okay, so now we want to connect this up to the rest of the machine. So this is where you take your final filter and you place it like so. Again, it needs to be facing the chest, not up, down, left, right, whatever. Okay, so once you've done that, you want to connect this one up. Making a pig zero of this, aren't I? You want to connect this one up with underneath where the rest of the generators are. So there we go. So then we'll have that go around like so. Okay, so once we've done that, we need to power this with a timer. So how I like to do it is I like to have it just down here like so. Um, okay, one other thing quickly before we do that is you want to take one lava cell, one, make sure it's only one, and place it in there. Not a stack because it gets a little bit confused. Just one lava cell in the filter. And then get your timer down. Uh, a good timer I feel is six and a half, uh, sorry, 65 milliseconds. And as you can see, it's going to start taking the lava cells out of the chest and start moving it into these. Now how this works is uh, pneumatic tubing is quite smart in its programming. If it can't find a space for the lava cells, if it goes to all of these and they're all full and they can't go anywhere, it will then move its way back to the start, come back up this tubing and go back into the chest. Because that's just, that's just how pneumatic tubing works. Pneumatic tubing, sorry. Um, so you don't need to worry about it spilling on the floor, glitching out, or any of that jazz. Okay, so that's all done. Okay, so then the next thing we want to do is take this glass fiber optic cable and move it away from the machine. Okay, then you want to take your power storage unit of choice. I am using an MFSU, which is the highest level one, um, and I'm going to place it here where the power can then move into it. As you can see, the ones that have uh, lava cells actively in them turn on and begin feeding power into the MFSU. But just to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to break that there and I'm going to cut the video and come back when the chest has filled all of these uh, geothermal generators with this lava. So I shall be right back. Okay, so all the geothermal generators are now full. To the, to the to the brink. Okay, so now we want to do is we want to fire up this mechanism here. Okay, so how we do that is simple. We want to pop a little bit of bricking here, just so we can wire everything up. I had a feeling it wouldn't let me do that. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to throw your timer down and then connect it to there, the filter, and the other filter. So that now is powering everything. Okay, so as you can see, blaze rods are flying. 
Now what you want to do is, when it goes back into the macerate, it's just going to start to macerate much like a thing you would. You want to take out some blaze powder and you want to put it in the empty filter that we deliberately left empty earlier on in the video. Okay, so this is basically a standard blaze rod generator, okay, which is I covered in episode 2 of the EMC generator series. It's creating infinite uh, blaze rods using this mechanism here. And when this is full, when this is full and when this area is full, the excess blaze rods will go into this chest, which will then make lava cells. Okay? So to make things a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up with blaze rods so we can see it in action a bit quicker. Now the reason why I've gone um, six overclockers is because it's perfectly timed for generating a blaze rod and taking away the blaze powders that are actually in the thing. Uh, what you need to make, you, you do need to make sure that this is down to six point, uh, 65 milliseconds though, so that the blaze rods do actually leave the generator. So as you can see, that was 60, 60, 60. So every time that it makes another one, it is taking out the bare minimum, so it's not using any power that it doesn't need to use. So as you can see, now that it's full, when it can't fill the macerator with a blaze rod, it's going to move over to this chest and it's going to make lava cells, quite rapidly, I may add. Um, and then it's going to use those lava cells to fill the geothermal generators. And as you can see, when it couldn't fill them, it went back into the chest. So now, if we hook this up to our MFSU, all of the geothermal generators will activate, giving us a hell of a lot of e uh, EU. Now what it's actually producing is it's producing 520 EU a tick. Okay. Now I'll prove that to you by spawning a EU reader. Now I normally don't spawn in items but I just want to quickly prove to you how much power it's generating. So now it varies due to the fact that it is trying to power this macerator as well. So it does vary but as you'll see it's about 520. Sometimes it even spikes over to over 530, 540. So as you can see, it produces more power than a high voltage solar panel. Um, and the and you're saying to yourself, well, why wouldn't I just make a high voltage solar panel? It's a one block machine after all. And what you've made here is a is a five by six block, and it's quite complicated. Well, I tell you the reason why uh, you should build this instead of that is. A, this isn't a high voltage circuit, so you won't need to make a high voltage transformer. Um, and B, the most important reason, is because a high voltage solar panel costs you about five, uh, 315 diamonds uh, to make in, in uh, EMC. Okay, now this, this, this contraption here will cost you 19. That's right, 19 diamonds versus 315. So that is the reason why you would make this machine. As well as the fact that it does a little bit more EMC, you're looking at about 20 more than a solar panel. And in my opinion, looks far cooler. So there you have it. It is the infinite geothermal generator, creating 500 plus EU a tick. Uh, I've been DCY Steza. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video.